LifeLink 3 provides on-scene emergency response and inter-facility transport for over 2,200 adult, pediatric and neonatal patients each year, serving nine leading hospital systems in Minnesota and Western Wisconsin. In 2013, LifeLink 3 replaced its entire ventilator fleet with nine new Hamilton T1 ventilators. The Hamilton T1 is currently the only ventilator on the market that allows us to provide a continuum of care from the referral agency to the receiving hospital. It's the only ventilator that's, uh, that's geared towards transport in a manner that we can continue exactly what the referring hospital or ICU is expecting to put that patient on for ventilator settings. When we implemented the T1, I feel like the drastic change to our patients was that we were able to get on top of problems faster than our previous ventilator. The ability to have constant feedback and things like a dynamic lung and really nice flow and pressure graphs is that you can see changes breath to breath and trend them a lot better than ventilators that don't have a really nice touch screen. Uh, when we got the Hamilton T1, I feel like one of the things that changed was most of the patients, even for a seven minute flight, started to go on the vent because we realized the change to the patient could actually be made in that short amount of time so we could actually make a difference in that short transport. Um, obviously one of the um, gross differences between the Hamilton T1 and the other manufacturers was a dual limb circuit which was unusual in the transport environment. The transport ventilators have always been a single limb circuit which kind of cripple our ability to monitor our patients in real time, uh, meaning breath to breath metrics. You get so much info breath to breath that you can make faster, more accurate clinical decisions. Um, that was one of the things that really surprised me of how much that changed my care. They can begin lung protective strategies early on with using ASV while they can pay attention to the rest of the patient and continue to assess them for uh, other injuries or um, further assess their illness. It's specifically really advantageous in trauma because you have so many other fires to put out that it's nice to just set up the ventilator for the patient's height and their ideal body weight and then allow ASV to manage the patient from a lung standpoint. Um, the fact that once you get the patient's height and ideal body weight plugged in, it's fairly easy to set up. There's probably five or six settings from like FiO2 to peak inspiratory pressure to PEEP. Um, and once you have those set up, ASV does a really nice job of transitioning from assist control to SIMV to spontaneous all on its own based on the patient's uh, work of breathing and their effort. And the fact that it's calculating thousands of times per minute uh, exactly the patient's work of breathing, their respiratory status, their uh, exhaled flow rates, um, their tidal volumes, everything. I think there was a lot of comfort that came from that. It's not set and forget, it's constantly reevaluating the patient and that gave us a lot of reassurance. Having a way that we know that we're providing the most protective, um, uh, the most that we're employing the most pr lung protective strategies that we can in route using a ventilator, knowing that prolonged ICU stays cost money we're likely um, seeing a return on investment at our receiving hospitals that are taking care of the patients that we transported because we started um, lung protective strategy ventilation early on.